we're going to talk about the jerk today. And we're going to talk about what not to do. We've talked about what you should do. We're going to talk about the most common bad habits that people have in the jerk that are costing them kilos. And I think these are things that people don't really talk about a lot. I mean, coaches cover them, but there's a lot of things people would jump to over these things just because they're a little easier to coach. They make a little more sense to people, but there's these little intricate details in the jerk that if you're not executing on those, it could be costing you however many kilos, five, 10% of what you're actually capable of. So we're going to dive into it and go over these three things, the three bad habits. And I'm going to show you how to identify if you have this problem. And then I'm going to show you how to fix it. So let's get into it. All right. So the first thing that people do more than anything, this is probably the biggest one is they, there is some sort of weight shift in their dip and drive. And that is because there is a cue that is overused more than any other cue. And that cue is heels for the dip and drive of the jerk. I absolutely fucking hate the cue heels. If anyone goes on their heels and then tries to do something athletic, what they're going to do before they do that thing that's athletic is they're going to shift onto their toes. Then they can be athletic. You cannot be athletic on the heel ever. Think of any sport, any athletic movement, no matter what it is. And I'm not talking about the squat. You can squat on your heels and probably be fine. But if you're going to jump, if you're going to be explosive, if you're going to fucking run into someone, you're not going to be on your heels. If you're a wrestler and you're about to shoot on someone, you're not going to be on your heels. Everything athletic is done through the full foot or the forefoot. So you need to find where you generate power from. For me, if I go down to jump, I load up into the front half of my foot, not on my toes, but I'm loaded up in the front half of my foot. So that is where I'm going to put the weight before I dip. So before I go down for my dip, I'll get a big breath and I'll find that spot in my foot. And I will imagine that the bar is directly over that spot. So we're here. I'm going to find that spot in my foot. Then when I get here, this is where the power is. So I'm not going to shift at all. If I find that spot before I start to dip and then I dip, the bar is going to go straight down and up. But if I think that that spot is somewhere else and I shift back onto the heels. So we're here. Watch what happens when I dip. The bar shifts forward and I load up in to the forefoot where my body naturally wants to go when I'm producing power. So you guys need to think of this from a literal standpoint, not what you hear everyone say, because I wasted the first five years of my lifting career being a terrible jerker because everyone told me, get your weight back, get on the heels, get everything back. And then one day I was tired of sucking at jerks and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to see what happens if I actually load up properly in my forefoot. That way I can use my quads. I can use my glutes and immediately my jerk got better. So if you're someone watch a video, next time you do jerks, put a camera up directly beside you. And if you see that barbell shift forward at all in the dip and drive, that's something you should give attention to it. Like everyone's going to shift around a little bit, but if it's noticeable to the point to where as soon as you dip, you're like, Oh fuck. Maybe think about repositioning the weight in your foot. Number two is being active with the arms too early. This is the reason for your press outs. It's the reason for a lot of the misses where the bar doesn't get high enough because from a physics standpoint, the jerk, takes 70% of the power that a clean would. So if you can clean it, you should be able to jerk it. And there are a lot of different factors in that, mainly pre-fatigue from the clean. But if you can clean it, you should be able to jerk it, or you should be able to give the bar the height to be able to jerk it. Obviously, overhead stability and stuff like that comes into play. It's much easier to stabilize a bar on your chest than stabilize a bar overhead. But if you are pressing early with the arms, you are turning the legs off. Oh, the way we can realize if we're doing this is you can watch your video back. If you finish the drive and the bar separates from the shoulders before the hips and the knees lock out, that means you're pressing too early with the hands. Now it could be really small, really minuscule. You can even see that when we dip, if the elbow angle changes as we come up from that dip, that means you're getting active too early and you need to make sure you lock everything down, let the bar sit on the shoulders, 
And as we dip, make sure that that bar does not leave the shoulders until the hips and knees lock out. Then once that happens, the bar can rise up. But it's a really easy thing to realize that you're doing because you can just watch a video back and be like, oh, my hips are here, but the bars are already off. That means you're pressing with the arms. And I guarantee you, your arms are not as fucking strong as your legs, unless you're that dude at Gold's Gym with the fucking fingerless gloves on doing bench press every day. Your legs are gonna be a little bit stronger than your arms. So make sure your hips extend before the bar leaves your shoulders. The way I like to cue this for people that have this issue and they can't really just mentally be like, all right, I need to be more patient. When the bar's in the front rack, don't squeeze it. Think of releasing some of that tension in your hands. Don't open up your hands, but you can just relax the hands a little bit to where the bar will naturally sit on the shoulders and then try to hold that until the hips lock out. There's gonna be a little bit of a disconnect just from the drive and the catch just because you kind of have to regrip the bar, but it's kind of a drill that teaches you what it's supposed to feel like. And then obviously as it becomes more natural, you can close those hands back up on the bar and the timing is gonna be there. And the third thing, this is a problem you will see pretty much for every bad jerker. Like if you're notorious for being bad at jerks, this is probably something you do. And it is short stepping the jerk. So what I mean by that is when we get into the split, your knee should never, the front knee should never go over the foot. It should stay directly on top of the ankle or it should be slightly behind. The best jerkers, you'll see that their knee stays slightly behind the front heel. It's a hard position to get to, but the main reason we do this is because we put most of our weight in our front leg, inadvertently. Like it's not something you're consciously doing. I, you know you have to split, but it's when we jump into that front leg. So if we go to jerk and we don't move that front leg a lot and we're supporting 70% of the weight in our front leg, it has to be bent too much. The knee has to be over the toe because everything is supported here. Like I can pick my back foot up off the ground and not move that much. What we want to think is keeping 50% of the weight in both legs. And in order to do that, the hips have to drop straight down and the feet have to move equal distance. You do those two things, you're going to be balanced when you jerk. So you finish your drive, the hips should go straight down underneath the bar and you should have 50% of the weight in each leg. A good way to test this or drill it or get better at it is to do jerks with pause and the catch. When I used to do remote coaching, every time I'd see someone with, someone with this problem, I would tell them to pause in the catch for three seconds on every single jerk up to about 85%. And what that does is as soon as you stick your jerk, you're gonna feel where the weight's going. If you're a bad jerker and you put your weight in your front leg, you're gonna get into the split and you're just gonna be grinding forward. But if you're balanced, you're gonna stick, there's gonna be no shift, and you're gonna be balanced. So you need 50% of the weight in each leg. Each leg is working the same amount, even though the back leg is in a more compromised position being behind you with the hip being super extended. It's weightlifting, you have to get good at this. So do some pause jerks, film yourself from the side to make sure you're getting that front leg out. And another cue you can use if you're sending the hips straight down and you're still short stepping somehow, I don't know how the fuck that would happen, but when I was on Muscle Driver, Glenn Penlay told me to think of slapping the front foot down. So if you just slide the front foot in the jerk, you're probably gonna short step. But if you think of hitting the heel and slapping the foot down, then you're gonna get way longer just because the first point of contact is the part of the foot that's closest to you. So the rest of the foot has to lay down and then you have this nice long split. So there's a couple things you can focus on. Use that last cue as a, as a last resort, but just focus on 50% of the weight in each leg, having about the same amount of bend in each leg. So if we're in the split here, the legs are bent about the same amount. We don't want the back leg to be more straight. We don't want the front leg to be more straight. I've never seen anyone do that, but if you're doing that, stop immediately. Same amount of bend, same amount of weight, hips dead center. If you do that, you'll be fine. Hopefully now that you've seen this video, you have a better understanding of what's going wrong in your jerk and what to do to fix it. Um, just practice the things I talked about. You're gonna see this video and you're gonna be like, oh shit, that's gonna fix me. Then you're gonna go to the gym 
and it's not going to help you right away. You need to drill these things over time because the jerk is the quickest movement in weightlifting. From the bar starting to accelerate to the catch, it's the quickest movement in weightlifting. So it's really hard to apply information in a really short time frame like that. So just give yourself some time. Uh, you don't need to rush through any of this. Give yourself like a month of working this stuff to start to see improvement. But that's it for today. Uh, we're going to do the clean in the next video to make sure you guys are getting better at the clean. I haven't done a clean in like a month, so I should probably do some before we do that. Um, if you guys like clothing, if you like to wear clothes, check out Barbell Apparel. They have the best clothes ever. I just got another package for them, which was like nice dress stuff. And it's, it's just as comfortable as the workout stuff. So if you work in an office and you need some comfy shirts, or if you're a person that likes to go out to a nice dinner and dress nice, Barbell has all that. And they also have shit for you to go hard in the gym. It's the best apparel there is. So click the link down there, support it. Um, supplements, Gorilla Mind, obviously. I use the multivitamin, multivitamin? I use the multivitamin and Gorilla Mode Base like almost daily. I think Gorilla Mode Base is the best pre-workout ever made. And I think they're multivitamin. I can't fucking say multivitamin. Their multivitamin has multiple vitamins in it. <laughs> I think it's the most well-rounded, full spectrum, like everything you'd ever need, especially if you're an athlete in the gym. Uh, if you just get like a basic everyday vitamin, it's not gonna have things to support you in here. The Gorilla Mind multivitamin has things to support you in the gym and outside of the gym. You're gonna feel good all the time. I think it's important that everyone takes a multivitamin because I don't really know anyone on earth that eats well enough to not take a multivitamin. So if you're not taking one, check out Gorilla Mine. Link's down there. And obviously sign up for the dog pack. The dog pack is in stride right now. I think the programming that's coming out right now is the best it's ever been. And there's some stuff. I know I talked about this a while ago. It's still in the works, but there's some exciting stuff coming with the dog pack. Um, some new options that are going to make it a little more accessible for everyone and it might fit your situation better. So be on the lookout for that. And other than that, I will see you guys next time.